Path of Exile's 22nd expansion of the 3.0 era is near its end. As the week-long events burn and the next PoE and PoE2 announcements near, final opinions are emerging about Trial of the Ancestors. Some are as hot as the fires of Mount Doom, others are as mild as everyone who plays a Bone Shatter Juggernaut. Don't worry, I'm one of those people. This video will examine every deliverable of 3.22. It will explore the auto-battler mechanic and the community's reception to a brand new mode of play in PoE. To some, this was one of the most boring additions to the game in quite some time, rewarding those who honed in on the absolute cheesiest methods imaginable. Others adored it. It will analyze the character-defining tattoos, hyper-present in most builds during 3.22. The best characters ended the league looking like one of the biggest rappers of the decade, or were entirely clean. There was no one in between. It will detail which of the new unique items became truly valuable and build enabling. This includes the unique item that saw the return of PoE community favorite content creator, Engineering Eternity. Truly remarkable. Then the video will dive into the Forbidden Sanctum and what impact its return had on Path of Exile as a whole. You all should have seen my video on the topic before. Anyone who said I was wrong about the incoming nerfs, there will be a dose of copium for you at the end of this video. It will highlight the brand new Atlas Keystones and explain how they completely changed the game for the better. After all, who doesn't like inviting the Maven to each and every one of their maps instead of Magma Dad or Angry Squidman? It will note the winners and losers of the newly introduced support gems. Yes, you probably know exactly which ones I'm referencing immediately. Unfortunately, a big batch of these fell as flat as my Sunday morning pancakes. It will give a resounding rating on the overhauled Guardian and Chieftain Ascendancy classes. One of these performed absolutely ruthlessly. Finally, this video will provide a recommendation to grinding your games on whether or not they should add Trial of the Ancestors and all its League-specific additions to the core game and conclude with my ultimate rating on 3.22. Will it enter the Hall of the Greats alongside Sentinel and Sanctum, or join Lake of Calandra in the rat-infested sewers beneath the city of Sarn? My fellow exiles, welcome and well met. I'm Talkative Try. We dive into Path of Exile, its development, and its competitors here on this channel. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe and give it a like. More on how you can support at the end. Now, let's get to it. The Auto Battling Tournament. Dropping an auto battler into Path of Exile was a huge risk, and GGG was 100% aware of that. Legions of vocal players on Reddit, the official forums, and Discord have enjoyed this unique style of play in Path of Exile. They praise it rewarding not only being intelligent in how you form your tribe, but how much you can cheese the entire game mode itself. Behold, the Tota Cheese. Yes, more so than any other mechanic in PoE history, Tota is riddled with cheese. In fact, there was so much cheese at League Start, GGG had to implement some mid-league patches to nerf certain aspects of the cheese. Now, for those who enjoy completely breaking a mechanic and being rewarded heavily for it, I'm happy. For those who enjoy auto-battlers and relying on units to win the day, I'm happy. However, I was one of the many who did not enjoy this mechanic. At all. It was pure suffering. I forced myself to try it, learn it, and grit my way through every single challenge related to it. But that's as far as I went. As soon as I dinged the final one, not dying in an entire tournament at rank 300+, plus, I pieced out of Tota forever. Why? Well, unlike plenty of PoE, it was monotonous, samey, and not entirely doable for the build I chose to play this league, the mild, bone-shattered juggernaut. The gameplay didn't involve much, and the most important part was channeling a totem intelligently. The battlefield was almost always the same, and after running through a dozen times, you had already encountered the same units and the same combo fields multiple times over. And then, as a melee, armor-based character, I struggled, especially because I couldn't fit the cheese tactics onto my build. I couldn't dodge hits, so it was tough to channel totems. If I ran into the big boy Kahuturoa, I had to sidestep around him and his goliaths of night every second or risk certain death. Concisely, the auto-battling tournament was a polarizing league mechanic. People either loved it or hated it. There were very few exiles in between. That cannot be said about our next topic of discussion, though. The Terrific Tattoos. No one is going to argue with me here. The tattoos were the best thing about the Trial of the Ancestors League and League mechanic, and it's not even close. These were one of four reward types original to Tota, and by far the most enjoyed by the bulk of the community. Yeah, Hinokura's lock was awesome and all, but a very small number of players utilized it. 
anyone could obtain, buy, and use tattoos, from your most casual PoE player to the sweatiest streamer around. Tattoos allowed relatively easy access to plus maximum resistances. They allowed for decent access to otherwise hard to reach keystones for certain builds. They gave everyone access to a few Karui flavored minions, which led to simple damage increases. They even allowed every build to work in some level of corpse explosion. And all of this, and more, just at the cost of passive skill points and attributes from the passive skill tree. Tattoos were a build creator's dream and many wish they wouldn't be isolated to just Tota. That they'll be brought to the core game when 3.23 Affliction or 3.24 and so on releases. Well, I've news for everyone, unfortunately. News that may or may not be true. Tattoos like Sanctified Relics, Calandra Jewelry, Recombination, and Crucible passive skill trees before them were just 3.22's version of Borrowed Power. In no capacity have the prior four league mechanics gone core. Not just a bit of Crucible, not a teeny weeny part of Sanctified Relics. It's quite likely tattoos will be the same. I'm sorry. Hopefully though, this next reward type from Tota is graduated into the main Path of Exile game next league. Game changing new unique items. Third to the tattoos and Hinakura's lock, but above the omens, the Tota specific unique items definitely defined a few interesting builds and archetypes newly in Path of Exile. Most of them are welcome additions to the PoE arsenal, and I hope they stay. Let's begin with Rakiata's Dance, a unique engraved greatsword found as a possible reward when defeating the Tesalio tribe in the Trial of the Ancestors. Not only is it one of the coolest looking greatswords in the game, it also enables the interesting elemental damage playstyle of completely inverting all enemy elemental resistances. This allows for some absolutely wild sword builds, which were lacking for quite some time. Next. Let's look at Utula's Hunger, a unique majestic plate rewarded to you when beating the Katava tribe in Trial of the Ancestors. The item itself forces you to build every other gear slot around it, which is quite unique for a unique. It gives between 700 and 1000 life if no other life modifiers are on other equipped items. That's a boatload of life, which allows you to aim for other powerful mods on your rings, amulet, boots, gloves, and helmet. It's difficult to gear around, but extremely rewarding when you do. Oh, I think I forgot belts right there. Third and finally is the only reward not obtained from Tota directly, but was introduced in 3.22, Replica Dragon Fang's Flight, a unique onyx amulet that can drop anywhere and can be chanced. This nice little necklace allows essentially all skills, niche and not, to receive a massive improvement. Gem improvements all around. The Forbidden Sanctum's Glorious Return. Sanctum was welcomed back into Path of Exile with open arms in 3.22, and it was rewarding as ever before. Factually, Sanctum was even more rewarding than in the League it was introduced, as in 3.22, you could chain Sanctum after Sanctum, as long as you had access to Forbidden Tomes. In Trade League, this was easy. Even playing solo, it was nearly guaranteed, with the use of a common relic and a bit of farming in maps. In 3.22, a small minority of players obtained Mirrors of Calandra from Sanctum at an alarming rate, with the biggest gamers among us even getting 8 mirrors in a single Sanctum run with the use of proper boons and reward duplication relics. Even cutting out the high earning outliers, Sanctum spit out Divine Orbs and Awakened Sextants like almost no other form of content, perhaps moderately rivaled by the Tota mechanic if you counted high earning potential tattoos and crafting materials like Hinakura's Lock. Plus, Sanctum was fun and a unique style of play in PoE, just like Tota. It rewarded long range, low risk, high offense builds, and extremely skilled players. Unlike regular PoE, you could not completely mitigate all damage in all scenarios, especially with a no-hit run relic that rewarded the original sin. You needed to use skill. Truly, it was a welcome addition to the game, but I'm almost 100% sure it's getting triple tapped by GGG in 3.23. We'll see soon enough. Pivotal new Atlas Keystones. By far the best addition to the core game were all the brand new Atlas Keystones on the enormous Atlas passive skill tree. These novel nodes added a variety of new ways to map in Path of Exile, which is always a welcome addition to PoE's primary form of endgame. Sure, we have farming special base types, alternate quality gems, and currency in Heist. We have fossils and growing our ego deep delving in the Azurite mine. We even have MPH, mirrors per hour, in Lycia's Forbidden Sanctum now. 
but the Atlas remains our true love, the biggest form of Endgame. I'd like to touch on three of the new Atlas keystones and briefly look over the new playstyles they enabled. First is my favorite, Destructive Play. This adds a set of new bosses to every map boss battle. The great thing here is these bosses can drop Conqueror, Elder, and Shaper Guardian, and Synthesis maps. This leads to constant Guardian and Invitation sustain, so you can chain Invitations like the Twisted, the Formed, and so on together to gather a ton of Maven's Ritz. You can either keep the Ritz, or run them, or sell them for massive profits to fund your highly expensive gear slots. Second is the Big Boom Keystone, Extreme Archaeology. This lets you set a single explosive and expedition encounters. The screen lag here is massive, but it also allows you to easily just blow up a screen full of juicy, juicy mobs, cutting down on the time it takes to run expedition substantially. With explodey builds, it's super satisfying. The third and final keystone I'd like to look at is the seventh gate. Usually, every league comes with a certain set of league modifiers you can for sure spawn using the map device. Once, they were Zana mods. Now, they are Kirek mods. With the seventh gate, you can always have access to all these mods, no matter what. It's a true choose what you want to play enabler, and that's awesome. Other keystones arrive for Ritual, Harvest, Beyond, and so on too. I'm excited for other PoE mechanics to receive game-changing Atlas keystones in future leagues. New support gems, winners and losers. It's clear to all most of the new support gems were duds. However, a few shined above the rest. I'm not the biggest balance whiz or build creation savant, so we'll keep this section short. Returning projectiles support acted as a substitute for Nemus in some builds. A few people really tried to make Flamewood support early on work in the league. Shockingly, Exiles, the only new support gem over 1% on PoE.Ninja, is returning projectile support. Everything else is 1% or even lower than that. Very few of these gems were straight damage increases. Instead, they changed up a playstyle or added a new way to play. People in PoE 1 focus on damage first. If GGG wants more playstyles to open up with these new gems, and any future ones, they'll either need to add some damage multipliers to them, or cut the multipliers on other gems. It must be done at some point, maybe that's when PoE 2, a whole new game, comes out. The Truly Ruthless Guardian Revamp Before 3.22 launched, people thought the Guardian Revamp would be decent. Yet, few expected how powerful it would be in one of PoE's niche game modes ruthless, and a sizable force in normal PoE as well. This is mostly due to the immensely powerful summons provided by the Guardian Ascendancy class. People quickly learn that Innocent's Sentinel-like minion the Ascendancy gives access to bonks people pretty hard and serves as an excellent companion all the way from the campaign well into maps. Summon Raging Spirits alongside Skeletons is all the rage for Guardians. That's likely to continue into 3.23. Right now, Guardian is sitting at 2% of all played characters on PoE.Ninja, just behind the next Ascendancy we're looking at. The Sleeper Chieftain Revamp As someone who tried to league start a super weird Chieftain build, I was initially disappointed in the Chieftain rework. Good thing I'm not even in the top 90% of build creators in PoE, because the Chieftain absolutely proved itself as the league progressed. The Ascendancy became a staple for low and high investment exiles. At the low end, it became an excellent mapper, with its Hinakora Death's Fury notable, allowing for massive explosions with skills like Righteous Fire and Blade Vortex. At the highest of high tier investments, it became one of the best boss killers using skills like Smite that allowed for multiple hits in a row using its notable Tawoa, Forest Strength. Players who didn't want to use explosions and go for massive clear with particular skills, and exiles who didn't have hundreds of divines to pour into a build though, Chieftain remained pretty bleh and around 2% of all characters on PoE.Ninja. My final recommendation and rating. Path of Exile 3.22 Trial of the Ancestors was announced during the biggest presentation in Path of Exile history at ExileCon 2023. People were excited after its announcement and leapt at the opportunity to try out a brand new game within a game in PoE, as well as all the new tech enabled by tattoos. Alongside that, disappointment arrived with very little balance changes to existing skills and ascendancies, with just the Guardian and Chieftain being touched. At the outset, everything seemed stale to start, but as the patch grew, more builds emerged, more strategies formed, and whether or not people liked the totem mechanic, there remained a positive view of the League itself. The endgame, thanks to the new Atlas Keystones, was reinvigorated. A fan-favorite form of play was back in the game with Sanctum. 
people were able to play with new support gems a bit, even if they fell through. All through the league, player numbers stayed high, matching Ritual in terms of percentage of players continuing to play one month and even two months into the league. The tattoos were a huge part of this. Altogether, this cements Path of Exile 3.22 Trial of the Ancestors among the great leagues of Path of Exile 1. It's not a Calandra, it's a Sanctum or a Sentinel. It's a Ritual or a Harvest. I enjoyed it thoroughly, hitting 38 challenges, and so did much of the community. I won't miss the tournament mechanic, and if it makes the core game, which I do think should happen, it and Tattoo should come to the game, good on GGG for adding an easier mechanic to cheese for those who enjoy it. Regardless, with PoE positioned as it is now, in the interim between Path of Exile 1 and 2, the next expansion, 3.23 Affliction, is set to be a banger. And hopefully it will not just keep PoE 1 in an excellent spot, but continue along the path of Tota and improve the game as a whole. I'm confident GGG will deliver. Therefore, I give Path of Exile Trial of the Ancestors a solid 8.5 out of 10. But what did you think? Did you enjoy Trial of the Ancestors? What was your favorite part? Your least favorite part? Are you looking forward to PoE Affliction coming out on December 8th, 2023? I am. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Please let me know, fellow exiles. A massive thanks to each and every one of you who watched this whole video. I deeply appreciate it. And here's an even larger thanks to all those who support me on Patreon and through YouTube. You can find links to support the channel in the description. Please check out these other videos on screen now. I have an inkling you'll enjoy them. Anyways, that's all for this video. Tala Moana, Exile. <laughs>